Hello. In a previous video, I modded this light, and one of the things I did was disconnect the battery compartment because I didn't want to use it. But what if I did? What if I wanted to make this run as long as possible just on battery? Or what if I wanted to make a data logging application that ran on battery and ran nowhere near a power source? Well in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Arduino using a little amount of power as possible. The first thing we need to talk about is the power supply. In this video, I'm going to be mainly using a USB 5 volt power supply. But in reality, if you were building a data logging application that was somewhere remote, you wouldn't be using a source like that. You might be powering it from an alkaline battery or some kind of rechargeable battery. Now we could use a power bank for that, but in reality, that's not very efficient. They internally step up the battery's voltage to 5 volts, which wastes a little bit of power. You'd probably choose to use the lithium battery directly, with some over-discharge circuit in there to prevent the battery being over-discharged. This is okay, however, because the lowest voltage you take a lithium battery to is much higher than the lowest voltage the microcontroller we're using will run at. You could also choose to run the microcontroller at a lower clock frequency. The ones we're using are at 16 MHz, but depending on your application, you may not need that. So let's start by having a look at how much power is actually used by the Arduino Uno. I've designed a very small sketch, which later we will improve. When you press a button, it cycles through some colours on an RGB LED. Assume for a minute that the button click is some kind of trigger to record some event or perform some kind of action, and the RGB LED is simulating the event being logged or a response to that action being performed. That trigger could also be an internal Arduino timer too allowing for recordings to be triggered at exact intervals. Now having uploaded this sketch to an Arduino Uno, we can see that when it's connected via the USB port, the Arduino Uno draws about 36 milliamps, and when we press the button, this jumps to about 63. We're not going to focus on the current when the button is pressed. That LED is just to prove something's happening. It's also covered up because it's far too bright for the camera. So why the high current draw? Well to start with, there's a lot of extra support components on this board to make it easier to use. For example, there's an extra chip here for the USB interface, as well as a few other parts such as a 3.3 volt regulator. In a remote location, we won't want the USB interface, so let's connect it to 5 volts directly. As you can see, that's a great power saving. We're now using 28 milliamps instead. Clearly this board isn't ideal for this application, but it does give us some ideas. Let's take a look at the Arduino Nano. I actually have two to test with. The first is a genuine board from Arduino. It uses an FTDI USB to serial converter. And the second, a compatible clone which uses the CH340 chip to do the same thing. Both boards have been programmed with the same sketch. Let's see how they perform. So we'll start with the genuine board via a USB. And we can see that around 27 milliamps is being used. Slightly better than the Uno. Now let's take a look at when it's powered via the 5 volt input. Ooh, that drops down to 20 milliamps. I suspect that the USB to serial converter isn't used when it's not connected. Now let's take a look at the clone board. It seems to start around 16 milliamps, which is already better than the official board. However, we don't really know what's been done to it. Because strangely, when we connect it via 5 volts, it actually increases. It just shows you don't really know what you're getting if it's not a genuine board. So let's do away with the USB interfaces altogether and move on to the Arduino Pro Mini. These have to be programmed using either an in-circuit programmer or one of the breakout boards. I noticed some interesting things with these. See how both of these have the exact same FTDI chip on them, but notice how the one on the right draws a lot more power. I suspect one of these has a fake FTDI chip on it, and unfortunately this is all too common. So I'm going to use this Arduino Pro mini board produced by SparkFun, and once again I've programmed it with the same sketch. So we've already started off at a lower current. We'll call it 15.1 milliamps. That's not bad. But this board also features a special pad that can be unsoldered for low power applications. This disconnects the regulator and the LED from the circuit to reduce power further. This now really is a bare bones Arduino and we're now down to 14.7 milliamps. The only other thing we can do is to reduce the input voltage and decrease the clock speed from 16 megahertz. According to the datasheet, this could potentially drop us down to 1.5 milliamps. But can we improve on this? Simple answer, yes. We can make this much better. You may also notice on the datasheet, it mentions a power down mode. Well, what's that? Right now, the Arduino is running at full speed, constantly executing the loop function. 
But what if there was a way to shut down the processor when it's not in use? Well, there is. The ATmega328 includes several power down modes with different levels of power saving. The one we're going to look at totally suspends our program running. But what use is that? Well, there's two ways to get the program up and running again. The first, obviously, by resetting the device. The second being the most interesting. The Arduino will wake in response to an interrupt. This could be an external interrupt or an internal one from a timer. Upon waking, the sketch will continue running from where it left off. I've modified the sketch to put the Arduino into power down mode. I started by including a library that makes this easy. Next, I configured the Arduino with the power down options I wanted to use. Then I set up an interrupt handler for the switch. We don't actually need to do anything in the handler, as by merely being enabled, the Arduino will wake up. And finally, in the main loop, we tell the Arduino to go to sleep. The moment it wakes up, we run our colour fading algorithm, and then when that's finished, it will loop back round and go back to sleep again. So let's see that running. Wow, it's consuming so little power, I've had to add my multimeter in there to measure it. That's 138 microamps. That's fantastic. According to the datasheet, at 3 volts, and at down at 4 megahertz, this could go as low as 1 microamp. For data logging purposes, running from a battery, that's an important saving. Clearly the device would run a lot longer before the battery ran out. Did you ever wonder what the system idle process is in Windows, and why it consumes so much CPU? Well, it's actually a program that does the same thing. It puts the CPU into a suspended state until needed again, which is why your computer gets hotter when it's working harder. If you really were building your own low power application, I doubt you'd use one of these stock boards. Instead, you'd probably design your own board with just the required components, but I think it's been useful to show what can really be done if needed. If you were wanting to connect to some kind of sensor, or log to an SD card, you'd probably want to have the power for those controlled by a pin on the Arduino, so when you shut the Arduino down, you could shut those devices down too, and then start them back up again when your application wakes up. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, and think about supporting me on Patreon. I'm off to mod this light now and add battery support. I'll see you next time.